Nerd! Welcome to The Note, I'm John Reisinger. And I'm Adam Ellis. Breaking news, a video game company has trademarked a very common word. Again. And if you guessed that company was king, you'd be right. Yes, the developer of Candy Crush Saga apparently hasn't made enough money off your mom because now... <laughs> <That's horrible. laughs> because now it's grabbed yet another really generic word, according to the law firm Morrison Lee, and that word is super. Which means that any other video game with the word super in it could soon be getting a letter from King. So heads up, Nintendo and Konami and lots of other video game companies, you might need a lawyer. Um, this could mean trouble for Super Mario, Super Street Fighter, and a ton of more games. It's the latest of examples of the tension between a company trying to protect its IP versus the rights of everyone else to use regular old words. Okay, first let's talk about trademarks and why they're important. Trademark law is specifically in place so that a company can protect its brand, service, or product from copycats attempting to use the familiarity of a brand name for their own gain. And a trademark is different from a patent or a copyright. Uh, for one, trademarks aren't the same as patents, which give a company exclusive rights to sell or produce a particular invention. It's not a copyright either, which protects an original work of authorship. A trademark exists to protect the name of a brand from confusion by competitors. That means that if you see Harry Potter, you as a consumer can be sure that J.K. Rowling had something to do with it, rather than a creepy 50-year-old dude trying to sell you his bad fan fiction. And people can trademark all kinds of things. Remember No Man's Sky's legal dispute with British broadcaster Sky over the use of the word Sky? Yeah, the word Sky is trademarked. Please don't sue us. Morrison Lee, which specializes in trademark and copyright law as well as video games, describes trademark law in the US this way. A trademark must have a distinctive character, meaning that it isn't gen generically synonymous with the product it is marketed in connection with, nor does it merely describe the product. That's why you can't trademark the phrase video games. Uh, basically, the more descriptive it is, the more likely you'll be able to get it trademarked. Okay, let's get back to King. The company is best known for the Candy Crush Saga franchise and has made a fortune from casual mobile games. Games. How much? The company makes more than a billion dollars in annual revenue, and last year it was acquired by Activision Blizzard, no less, for $5.9 billion. Oh, it's a lot of money for just candy on a phone. Why? Why, Adam? It's fun to crush them. I guess. In addition to making money hand over fist, King has a long history of applying for trademarks, some of which are arguably pretty vague. The company has uh, has applied for 174 trademarks in the United States, according to Morrison Lee. You might remember that King has a trademark on the word candy in the UK, but it abandoned that legal battle here in the US. But King did manage to trademark the word saga, and they've had a number of legal fights over that word, most notably with the makers of the Banner Saga. In the end though, King and Stoic came to an agreement and Stoic was able to use the word saga in the name of its game. More recently, in December of 2016, King successfully registered a trademark for the term jelly for use with video games, and last month, it successfully registered the word super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. Which could be a problem yep. because there are a lot of games with the word super. Yep. For instance, half of the games that came out for the Super Nintendo in the 90s. That's a lot. Uh, let's list a few. Super Mario Brothers, Super Monkey Ball, Super Street Fighter 4, Super Glove Ball, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, Kirby Superstar, Super Mario Kart, Super Tetris, Gunstar, Super Heroes, Jump, Superstar, Super Jeopardy, and a lot more, you get the idea. Super indicated that it was a better game than the last version of it. <laughs> Battles over trademarks have a long, long history in video games, actually in all kinds of businesses. But for the purposes of this story, let's just give examples from the gaming industry. Back in 2012, Bethesda sued Mojang for its card game Scrolls. At the time, it seemed weird that Bethesda would target a game that had nothing to do with the Elder Scrolls series. But now, they have their own Elder Scrolls card game, so it makes sense. And in 2016, news broke that Sony tried to file a trademark for the term Let's Play. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> this caused a huge uproar from gamers who have been collectively creating Let's Play videos for years, and Sony's attempt was ultimately shut down by the US government for being too generic. Take that, Sony. <laughs> um, so, since King registered the word super, does this mean no more Super Mario? Will our Street Fighters get a lot less super? Well, not necessarily. Under US law, other parties are entitled to challenge the registration of a trademark. So we'll see if Nintendo or someone else raises a red flag. Otherwise, it's safe to say that there will be a lot more legal battles up ahead. What do you think of this latest trademark battle? Should a company be allowed to own a common word like super? Let us know in the comments. And for all your video game legal brawling news, be sure to like this video and subscribe to The No. The Super No. The Super No. Welcome to the Super No. Bring it, King! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> from copycats attempting to use a, f a from copycats attempting to use 
fucking goddammit. From copied cats, remember No Man's Sky legal, remember, no, remember, remember No Man's Sky's legal debut over 